hello everyone so this is the part 3 of the body fluid distribution lecture so in our previous lecture we discussed about the body fluid compartment and its distribution we also discussed about the osmosis that how osmosis works and we also practice some question on that topics okay so in this lecture we are going to focus on the solute which is present in the extracellular space and how the solutes are useful in the calculation of the osmolarity and also in the calculation of the osmolar gap so in our extracellular space these are the seven solute which is present majorly okay so what are the solute these are the sodium chloride blood urea nitrogen glucose creatinine co2 and bicarbonate and potassium so we call this seven solute also as a chem seven and whenever we take the basic blood profile test in a, in an individual then we used to calculate the seven solute and and the here is the value of this seven solute the normal value of this seven solute which is present in our extracellular space so you can see that the sodium is the abundant osmol which is present in the extracellular space which is about 135 to 145 millimole per liter okay and we you can also see the co2 and bicarbonate which ranges between the 22 to 28 milli osmol per liter you can see potassium 3.5 to 4.5 milli osmol per liter and glucose which is around the 60 to 100 milligram per deciliter so we get to know that the what are the SI unit which is used to calculate this the solute so just remember that this four solute are measured in milli mole per liter and and this three or small is measured in milligram per deciliter or milligram percent one more concept i want to share with you sometimes this concept comes in a question so under the osmotic equilibrium the extracellular and the intracellular osmolarity are same so in this condition we can calculate the total milli osmol of the body okay so in my previous lecture i discussed about the osmosis so if you did not watch that video please go to the link description where i provided so suppose this is the body compartment suppose this is the intracellular body compartment and this is the extracellular body compartment so under the osmotic equilibrium the there is no movement of fluid is seen across the compartment why because the osmolarity of the both compartment are same so there is no movement of fluid is seen between the intracellular to the extracellular or vice versa so in this condition we can calculate the total milli osmol of the body with the help of extracellular fluid osmolarity and total body water we can derive this with the help of SI unit also for example the SI unit of the extracellular fluid osmolarity is what milli osmol per liter and the total body water is measured in liter so liter liter will cut and we get the milli osmol that is the total total milli osmol of the body so let's discuss about the osmolar gap okay so what is osmolar gap how it is measured so osmolar gap is the difference between the estimated and the measured osmolarity so what is estimated osmolarity so the osmolarity which is which we estimate from the patient data remember i told you that with the help of the extracellular solute we can calculate the osmolarity of the solute and also the osmolar gap so here is the formula to calculate the osmolarity of the extracellular fluid that is the 2 into sodium and glucose by 18 and blood urea nitrogen by 2.8 so we will calculate the normal value of the 
of the extracellular fluid osmolarity that is the 2 and the normal value of the sodium is 140 okay plus the normal value of the glucose is between the 60 to 100 so we take in between that is 90 90 by 18 okay and blood u nitrogen blood u nitrogen normal value is between 7 to 24 so we take here 15 okay 15 by 2.8 okay so here 280 280 here 5 and here approx 5 so 280 plus 5 5 how much 10 that is so the normal extracellular fluid osmolarity is around 290 millimole a small part liter this is the estimated osmolarity which we measured from the patient data and the normal osmolarity is around 290 milli osmol per liter so what is measured osmolarity so measured osmolarity is the measured is the osmolarity which we measured from an instrument called osmometer and generally the measured osmolarity and estimated osmolarity are same okay but if the difference between the estimated and measured osmolarity exceeds 15 okay then it indicates that there is some kind of the extra substance which is present in the patient's blood and that extra substance or we you can call the culprit which is hiding in the blood are the methanol ethanol ethylene glycol acetone or it can be mannitol okay and this substance can elevate the or smaller gap in the patient let's discuss some question to understand the concept well so in this question a 67 year old male was found pulseless and resuscitated he had fallen from a 10 foot balcony to a snow covered ground so he arrived in the emergency room with a fractured occiput and was unresponsive so upon admission to the hospital we used to first take the blood profile and in blood profile we i told you that whenever we take the blood profile you we we generally used to calculate that seven solute that is the chem seven that i told you just a minute before okay so so what is the uh, purpose to calculate the solute that with the help of the solute we can calculate the estimated osmolarity in the patient so we know that uh, we just studied that to calculate the osmolarity the formula is the 2 into sodium plus glucose by 18 plus blood urea nitrogen by 2.8 so we can take this 20 also okay we can take this 3 also okay so let's calculate how much it it comes okay so here you can see 2 into sodium okay so the sodium value is 143 143 and the uh, glucose is glucose is 104 so 104 by 18 and BUN is 4 we uh, see here 4 so 4 by 2.8 and we get the osmolar that is the 293 milliosmol per liter or per kg so it is it is near to the normal okay the osmolarity is near to normal so our next step is to calculate the osmolar gap so osmolar gap is equal to measured minus estimated osmolarity so here you can see that the measured osmolarity is around 356 milliosmol per kg. So 356 minus the estimated osmolarity that is the 290 milliosmol per kg and we get the 63 milliosmol per kg or per liter. So I taught you, I discussed you that if the difference exceeds, if the difference exceeds 15 then there is some kind of uh, a substance which is hidden in the patient blood and uh, this 
indicates that it is well above 15 and this indicates that the presence of ethanol, methanol, ethyl alcohol acetone or mannitol in the patient body. Let's discuss the another question. So in this question, a 25 years old man participated in a clinical study to evaluate the extracellular osmolarity. His intracellular fluid osmolarity is 28 liter. Extracellular fluid volume is 14 liter. And the plasma volume is 3 liter. Extracellular fluid osmolarity is 285 milliosmol per kg. Okay. And the participant then drinks 3 liter of water and consumes 10 milli equivalent of sodium which is in the form of potato chips and the question is telling to find the new extracellular osmolarity after drinking 3 liter of water and consuming 10 milli equivalent of sodium in the form of potato chips and this question is also telling to assume uh, this under the osmotic equilibrium. So this thing is the key in this question. So as I discussed in my lecture, in this lecture, that under the osmotic equilibrium, there is no mo movement of fluid takes place across compartment because the intracellular as well as the extracellular osmolarity are same. So, so we are going to calculate the total milliosmol before before drinking and and consuming 3 liter of water and 10 milli equivalent of potato chips okay so we calculate the total milliosmol with the help of extracellular fluid osmolarity and total body water okay so the extra cellular fluid osmolarity is given that is 285 milliosmol per kg and we know that total body water is what ICF plus ECF so 40 liter is given 28 liter is given so it becomes 42 kg or 42 liter okay so the total milliosmol when we calculate when we multiply it comes this much that is the 11,970 milliosmol okay so after consuming 3 liter of water and 10 milli equivalent of sodium so the sodium is also a milliosmol so we directly add this 10 into the old milliosmol okay so 11970 plus 10 is equal to 11980 milliosmol and we add the new water into our old old total body water that is 42 plus 3 that is 45 liter so so with the help of new or milliosmol and with the help of the new total body water we can calculate the new extracellular fluid osmolarity because we know that the milliosmol is equal to what ECF plus ECA multiply by total body water so if you want to calculate this one then we put this over it by this okay you understand so 11980 by 45 is equal to 260 milliosmol per kg is the new extracellular fluid osmolarity after consuming 10 milli equivalent of sodium and drinking 3 liter of water thank you